Welcome to the last edition of the 2016-2017 school year Tiger Stripes. This is a show that's compiled of all the pieces that are going to play over the summer and I hope that you all enjoy the show and have a great summer. In the Unsung Heroes of MISD, Jim Bauer does a lot of behind the scenes work for the school. Let's take a look. The 2016-2017 yearbook staff unanimously decided to dedicate this year's yearbook to a man who often goes unnoticed by the student body. He personifies Murray High's tradition, pride, and excellence. Tradition. While he did not graduate from Murray High School, he has faithfully carried out MHS traditions throughout his time with the district. Pride. This man is fully invested in Murray High School athletics. He works day in and day out to ensure the safety of our athletes and the efficiency of each and every program. While his job was only supposed to consume a few hours a week, I'm 99% sure he's at the high school more than we are. Excellence. This man goes above and beyond all expectations. He does the jobs that others do not want to do, takes the time that others do not want to take, and works harder than many people in our school. Today we are dedicating the 2016-2017 yearbook to our facilities coordinator and athletic director, Coach Jim Bauer. Well, every day is different. Um, usually get to work about 6.30 in the morning. We have a meeting with our maintenance staff at 7, and that's where we sort of delegate out and make some decisions on what we're going to work on. Uh, the areas that we deal with are um, the grounds. We take care of all the athletic fields, so obviously during the winter we're not outside much, but uh, we also take care of um, 
uh, football fields, baseball, soccer, and all those, uh, from mowing to fertilizing to spraying to making repairs. We also do the plumbing, the heating, the air conditioning, the uh, construction projects uh, for the school system, or, or when we have to contract those out, we have to be the ones to, to work with those contractors to, to get the work done if it's something we can't handle. So it's different every day, every hour is different, and we just, the biggest thing is we have to be able to adjust and sort of go with the flow. Uh, during the day, I have to also squeeze in athletic director things, um, and that's anything from uh, coaches training to uh, game administration, getting ready for games. We also have big Title IX reports we have to do for the KHSAA, and that's a pretty time-consuming task, and that's getting ready to kick in, so I've got to work on that. Try to support the coaches, and, and if there's needs that they have or things that I can assist with that makes their job easier, then, then that's really... Probably the number one priority as an athletic director is to try to, to uh, take care of the, the off the court type things that, that, that we can that will help make the, make the, uh, the coach's job easier. Um, so that pretty much gets through the day uh, and it just repeats itself day in and day out. Uh, evenings are taken up by game administration for sporting events, uh, pretty much on call for any type of problems that crop up. If um, Murray Middle School was having a basketball game and they had a big leak, I'd be the one to get the call. So those are the types of things that you know, I'm involved with. I, I work with, I work, have to work with, uh, of course we have a maintenance staff, work with custodians, work with the principals, work with the board office administration, uh, work with coaches, um, and pretty much try to, to meet the needs and, and work through things that they need to make their jobs easier. And, and in, the bottom line is to support the students in the academic mission of the, of the school system and make sure facilities are in order so that it doesn't interfere with the academic stuff that's going on. Uh, I like the, that it's not routine, that there's, it's different every day. Um, that, and, and I like, uh, when I was at Murray State, I had to, uh, I had to manage several things going on at once, several different areas, and I enjoy that part of it as well. I, you know, I've got the, the athletic side, I've got the facility side, and uh, try to keep things moving forward. Uh, some things take a long time to complete. Hall of Fame is going to be in a process that goes on for a long time. Never going to finish that. Um, but I need to keep it moving forward every year, make sure we're adding inductees into the Hall of Fame and that. I will tell him or her that this is a wonderful place to work. The students, the teachers, the staff, the parents, the community, they're very proud of their school district. It's been here a long time. We have a reputation of academic excellence and our students and our staff and our community try really hard every day to make sure that we continue that academic excellence. Much of the success I attribute to the teachers, but an equal amount I attribute to our students who work proud. 
very proud of our students. They do so well in so many things. And you couple that with some outstanding staff members, outstanding coaches, directors, sponsors, teachers. My s slogan that I have over my desk is, when you're through improving, you're through. And so you don't, you don't ever need to quit looking for ways to do something better. But I'm just thankful every day that I have the opportunity to, to end my career in a school system like Murray Independent Schools. I see no reason why we can't have a school district for another 140 years. But it's going to take that, that hard work, that pride, that tradition, the continuing of that excellence if we're going to do that. Well, I've been here 12 years. You know, we're proud of the uh, of our new gymnasium. We're proud of our new track. We're proud of the 25-year agreement with Callaway regarding the non-resident students. We're proud that we're going to be able to build a new high school. Uh, probably the most exciting thing was the day that uh, that Whitney York called me and said, "Mr. Rogers." We have the highest test scores in Kentucky this year. Well, uh, my wife told you right. I do like to ride the boat. And so I look forward to spending time on the water. And uh, other than the lake, uh, I probably will do some volunteering at some different organizations. And Tyler Cooper traveled to the ATC building and had a chance to talk with the principal and a few of our teachers about their careers and how it all got started. I applied for a carpentry teacher's position and I got it. All right, Ms. Holman, how have, how's your own careers led up to you being a chef? Um, when I was in college at the University of Arizona, I started catering for sororities and fraternities and from there I decided to go to culinary school at the Art Institute of Colorado. So, what led you up to be teaching culinary? I was working here at the nursing home, uh, managing the um, kitchen, and the position came open, so I just decided I would apply for it. It sounded like something I really wanted to do. Are you glad you took the opportunity to oh, for yes. the job? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That is probably one of the best decisions I've made. I was want to know, like, what led up to your career of being in construction? Uh, well, I started construction when I was a 13-year-old boy and helping my father um, and learning what he knows and his trade and it just kept going from there. So what led you up to be a teacher for? A uh, job op opportunity come open and I always thought it'd be something I'd like to do, give back to the school community and uh, Applied for the job and got it. And special thanks to all the people who donated furniture at the ATC building. The state, um, they provide grants towards departments and we're one of the departments that has received that grant and we work a lot of extra highway safety overtime. Um, with that, there's a big push over the last couple of years for distracted driving and charges to um, cite people for texting while driving. Texting and driving is a problem all across the state and really all across the nation. The number one reason that we have with those accidents is distracted driving. And that doesn't always mean texting or things like that. It just means inattention from the driver. Um, this is my dog Bentley. Warner Animal Clinic is great. They provide care to him when he is sick or needs to be boarded. But don't just take my word for it. I spoke to Miss Ann Lee about what makes Warner Animal Clinic so great. This is Warner Animal Clinic. My mother, Amanda Rivas, a vet tech, works here along with Dr. Leslie Jackson.
it's the people, most of, most of all. Dr. Jackson is a wonderful doctor, and she cares a lot about her, her patients. She will get down on the floor and look at the dog, which a lot of vets won't do. And she is just extremely caring about not only the dog, but also the, the pet owner. And so are all the people. They're very kind to you. They're very caring. And they make sure that you're taken care of. If your dog is really sick like mine was emotionally, they give you some support. So it... They go above and beyond what an ordinary vet would do. First, they're very knowledgeable. And the second thing I think which is extremely important with people is that they aren't afraid to admit when they don't know something. And if they don't know something, then they will try to find those things out. If they feel that they really can't like look something up, they'll call another doctor or something like that. They are also willing to say, we have to try something different. If something's not working, they're willing to say, this isn't working, and go back and try something else. And that's, you know, a lot of doctors won't do that. And, you know, as in terms of vet techs, I've seen Amanda come in um, when it wasn't her shift, you know, come in on weekends, they've come in on Sundays for me. Well, Augie is a Westie, and that's short for West Highland White Terrier, so he's white. <laughs> And he is 13 years old now. Um, he has had always been a healthy dog until last summer, and then all of a sudden he had a problem, and I brought him in, and they thought it was a herniated disc, which it probably was, but after that he just kept getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And he has now what is known as autoimmune hemolytic anemia, uh, which means that he can't make, enough blood cells but it's an autoimmune condition not just because he doesn't have enough iron or something like that so um, he periodically has to have blood work done and at the time he was so sick we really thought he was going to die but Amanda and Dr. Jackson pulled him right through I mean they had to give him fluids twice a day for weeks on end which meant seven days a week people were coming in to help me with that and you know they're just pulled him through. But he's a wonderful dog. He's very loving. And um, he loved other animals. So that's when Dr. Jackson said he needed a, a companion animal. <laughs> so he now has Penny as his little sister. Well, I, I can tell you when I first came here with Augie and he was so sick and I was very, very frightened because my dog means a lot to me. And Dr. Jackson looked at me and said, don't worry yet. Yeah. She said, I'll tell you when you should be worried. And it just meant a lot to me. Because it meant to me that she had hope. And that was just really important to me. And that's probably my favorite reason that I come back because... I've never had a vet that would talk to me like that and tell me, you know, what's really going on. When you go to a lot of vets, they take the dog in, they want to keep them, do whatever they're going to do, and then give them back to you. And they don't want a whole lot of interaction with the owner. So I think that that's probably the most important thing because if you're really attached to your dog, or your cat for that matter, but if you're really attached to your animal, you need to be part of that process. And she made me part of that process from the first day. And that made me very appreciative. Well, um, I would like to say that it doesn't look like much from the outside, but inside it's nice and warm and happy. <laughs> I mean, it's, um, it's a small place. And I think that's also good because it is small if you do have to leave your dog overnight or something. Um, it's not like they're overwhelmed with a lot of other dogs. Um, it's also, even everybody here, it, they know your name. They know your dog's name. They take care of your dog very well. They don't just treat them as if they're a number. They will 
call them by name and take them out on walks and play with them and do whatever they can for them to make their visit good. So it's the people. I had an opportunity to cover the University of Kentucky and Georgia Tech Tax Slayer Bowl game in Jacksonville, Florida from the sideline. UK hasn't been to one in six years, right, Bo? Yeah, that's right. They had an amazing season. I even got a unique experience to be able to sit down with one of the University of Kentucky's own, Wells Purdom, a football player, to talk about the days and events leading up to the game. I'm Bo Osborne, WMHS TV 13 sports reporter and member of the basketball and football teams here at Murray High School. Being able to cover Kentucky's first ball game in six years was not only a dream of mine, but it was a very unique experience, as well as a unique experience for the University of Kentucky athletes who participated. Applying for this media pass was an online process which allowed me to apply as a Murray High School TV journalism student. Walt McCracken, Wells Purdom, was an all-region player two years in a row, received the 11th Man Award as the captain of his team, and was voted top 50 prospects by the Courier Journal for his athletics. Wells Purdom, a freshman walk-on and graduate of McCracken County High School, participated in this bowl. Wells is the son of Tripp Purdom, a 1981 Murray High graduate, the nephew of John Purdom, a 1983 Murray High graduate, and the grandson of the late Wells Purdom, a 1957 graduate. Grandson of Betty Jo Crawford, a 1957 Murray High graduate. All members played in the Murray High football team. With me on set today is Wells Purdom. Um, he recently traveled to the Tax Slayer Bowl with the University of Kentucky. What has it meant to you suiting up in UK Blue? Well, uh, you know, as a child, my dream was always to play college football, mm -hmm. and as I grew older, I decided that I wanted to play at UK, and that's a lot of people's dreams in Kentucky. I know a lot of people on my team in high school wanted to do something like that, and I had the opportunity to do something that fortunate, and um, so suiting up in UK blue is something I've had a dream about for a long time, and it brings a lot of pride to me and to my family, and you know, walk around campus on, at UK, you had a little chip on your shoulder when you wore UK blue and it said football across your chest and you know, you kind of felt important, you're part of something. So it was really nice to be able to have that experience and do that. Walk us through traveling to the bowl game and like the activities that y'all took part while y'all were down there. So it all started off where they flew us out from wherever we're closest to. They flew us out of Nashville and people flew out of California, you know, from their hometowns. And they paid for our flight to go down to Jacksonville. And so, and in Jacksonville, we stayed at the uh, Sawgrass Marriott. It's uh, very well known for the golf course, very nice uh, hotel and everything. And so we'd stay in there, we'd practice um, throughout the days, but we'd do some team activities. Like one of the things we did one day is uh, we went to the Naval Base down at uh, Jacksonville. And outside of that, then probably one of the funnest things, probably my favorite that we went and did after a practice one day is we went to this thing called Top Golf, and you know we had a lot of fun, you know, team bonding, a lot of uh, camaraderie that between us. You know, it was just a great time, and then the bowl itself was probably you know just to top it all off. Even though we didn't come away with a W, it was a great time to experience. Currently, you are transferring to Murray State to pursue a degree in pre dental. Uh, what is a life-lasting memory that you will take with you from UK? Well, uh, you know, honestly, this is probably one of the hardest decisions I've had to make. As I said earlier, you know, this is a dream of mine was going to UK and playing football. But sometimes you realize that um, a career is something you got to focus on more than the sport. And so that's what I decided to do to come back to, you know, Murray State, where a lot of my family is at and everything to pursue that career. And, you know, with the football, it's just something I'll look down, you know, 20, 30 years down the road now, and I'll see the experiences that I've had, had playing football. And, how much fun I've had and all the friends I've got to make, that's probably going to be the, the hardest part is leaving those uh, friends that I made on the football team. So just those memories I've had to carry on through life with me and to look back on and say, hey, you know, at least I tried, at least I tried my dream and it may not be worked out, but at least I'm happy with the results. Yeah, I know football's brought me a lot of great memories and friends. Yeah, for sure. What have I done with my conscience?
Living in the palm trust, taking town 40 streets to the wall, start cracking down to my feet, to the tide, my thoughts are never gonna leave, till the gray wind howls, it takes control, I'm kicking down what I see, to the way, my love is like a magazine, to the heartbeats of the ones I'm gonna leave, to the gray Well, tonight we are having an early learning event um, with children that are five and under and not yet in kindergarten. Um, the event is to teach parents and have activities for the kids to learn that they can take home, that they can do these activities um, in their everyday life at home, and at the same time be teaching their child and preparing them for kindergarten. So it's kind of a kindergarten readiness, early learning fair, um, and we've made it lots of fun with superheroes and activities. Um, tons of free stuff, free books, free CDs, all kinds of great ideas and free stuff that they get to take home um, and continue on to better prepare them for kindergarten. This is actually the very first year that we've done this. So this is our kind of learning curve and it has turned out fantastic. We've had over 120 kids so far tonight, so it's been a great success. Basketball court at the Murray High School Taylor Gymnasium shall be named and henceforth shall be known as the Rochelle Turner Court.
Hi, this is Miss Mailey, art teacher at Murray Middle School. We recently had our Murray Middle School Arts Night on April the 27th, and it was a wonderful event for our students to share some of their uh, talents in the arts. We started out in the auditorium where we had a few students to read their speeches and their poetry, and we also had a percussion ensemble. The parents and community were invited then to come around to our arts wing where we had displays of artworks for all the students in our school fourth through eighth grade. We had several small music ensembles. We also had the arts rooms open for the community to come in and see the different arts uh, presentations that were going on in technology and music and dance and the art room and the band room. We ended the night with a closing ceremony where we had several students recognized as art standing, outstanding artists and were received awards. These awards were chosen by Murray State University art majors who were alumni who came in and judged our works. They had quite a time picking the winners because they were all such wonderful pieces to choose from. We also ended the night uh, with our reception with a few uh, songs from the Murray Middle School Jazz Band with Miss Stribling conducting and it was just a wonderful event. Opens up for a wide open three and it's good. Like Double kick stolen by English. He'll get a breakaway and lay it off the glass. It is. Speeds up the far side like takes it in the hole, puts it off with the left hand and hit it. No look pass by Boone finds Porta. brought you to Murray to become the boys basketball coach in 1975? Well, I had, um, of course, I was a graduate of, of Murray High School, uh, and then I, I coached over at Tree County for a year. Okay. I was up in northern Illinois at Rockford Auburn as an assistant up there for five years, and got the opportunity to, to come back home and, and be, the, uh, be the boys basketball coach, and, of course, I jumped at that chance, and uh, I've been here ever, ever since. The, uh, obviously, in, the, in Kentucky, winning the regional championships is a big deal. And I think Murray won their first one in 1974. So you followed up after that you know, fairly quickly. And then it uh, didn't take you long to win another one. In 77, you guys, I know, I know Coach Raymond Sims. I met with him and a couple of other guys on the team. But y'all had a really, really strong team then, didn't you? We had a, a very, very quick team. Uh, we, we played similar to your group. We pressed. A whole lot. Uh, matter of fact, we were, I, th I think, the last team to score 100 points in the state tournament game uh, before the three-point shot. More good years, but you also had a kind of a, I don't know if it was a surprise, but 1985, you went back to Rupp Arena. Uh, tell me about that team. How were they different than your your 77 team? Well, we were bigger, and uh, of course, uh, we, well, that was just a, a, a team that played so well together. Mm -hmm. uh, they shot the ball extremely well. Uh, they turned the ball over very little. And a, a really an intelligent team. Really makes the jobs of coach pretty easy when you've got that caliber of players. It's so nice to meet you. Thanks for having me out. Nice I really appreciate you. it. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, you know, I played here from 70, 75 to 77. And, uh, one of the things, the different things now is just we didn't have a three-point line back then, and, 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 uh, but now you guys do. And I guess, I guess my junior year, we couldn't allow the dunk. But my 
senior year we could, which was the 77. So that's a couple, couple of changes that that uh, very noticeable now with, with, with the game. But uh, so we had we had some good teams. Uh, I started I started my sophomore year. Pretty good, pretty interesting story. I was uh, I started JV my sophomore year about the first three or four games, and we were playing Carlisle County here at this gym. We were getting blowed up with like 30 points. We were getting beat pretty bad, like I said earlier. And so I took a couple charges and scored maybe six or seven points. And so after the game, he was talking to his child in the dressing room. He was pretty upset. Coach Toon was. And, and uh, he goes, uh, well, Raymond Sims was the only person to play with, play with the heart. He didn't really play a lot. And Raymond get ready because she's going to start the next game. Not JV, but varsity. And uh, our next game was against Cairo, Illinois. And then uh, the history about Cairo is uh, they, uh, back in the 60s and early 70s, that riots at the Cairo, mm -hmm. and so no schools came over there to play them at night or anything because it was pretty pretty hostile over there. But but 70, 75, we were the first team to go play Cairo at night over there. So mm -hmm. that was the first game I started varsity in my high school uh, high school career. So went over there and played those guys. We lost by a couple points. So played pretty good. And it was kind of like the, the beginning of my, of my mm -hmm. career. And then from that game on, I started you know, all the games from you know, all to my you know, and then I started every, every game, varsity. In the Rupp, have you ever, have you ever been to Rupp Arena? I did. <laughs> I did when uh when we went to the Sweet Sixteen tournament as a coach of the Murray High Boys basketball. Team. Okay, have you been? Did when you were when you were playing at Murray, did you and your teammates ever talk about Rupp Arena, or did you realize what what you were getting into? Like, did you realize what you were chasing as the year went along? Did you guys ever talk about it? Not really. It was. It's been. I think since 2001, since uh, you guys went last year, won the regional tournament, it, it had been a while before a team at Murray had went to Rupp Arena as part of the Sweet 16, mm -hmm. and that, uh, just a goal for us was to make it to the regional tournament. Mm -hmm. So as far as setting a goal to make it to Rupp Arena, that was, of course that was on our list, but not not one of our major goals for, for the year. Yeah, I remember, I've, I'm from Lexington, so I've been to a bunch of state tournaments since I was little. I've never been to one until last year, like playing. But I remember when I came here, I just talking to the, our teammates. They didn't know. They didn't know what they like. We wanted to go to the state tournament, but they didn't know what it was all about. They didn't know how much it meant to people in Kentucky and how many people would be there and how big Rupp Arena was. I was the only one. Me and I think Cam Kelly were the the only two people that had ever been to Rupp Arena, and so. One of the things I'll never forget is when we walked in as a team. I guess, did we get to walk in the day before or was it the, it was the, the morning of? The yeah. The, we played the first game at, at the state tournament last year. and I just remember walked, walking in and I knew what it was going to be like. But like looking around everybody else's faces, they were just shocked from Little Murray, Kentucky. They'd never seen anything like it. And that was when you could kind of feel like all the work we had put in for two years. It was like this is what it was for. Right and to see it on those guys' faces was amazing. So that was something that I was always looking forward to and just showing them, you know, Rupp Arena and the state tournament, what it was about. Gears coming to the lane, pulling up off the last good. Macy Turley, ladies and gentlemen. to Macy up left side. She comes Burpo open underneath in transition. Turley quickly has Waldrop on the run. Bounce pass basket good. Macy Turley in the transition finish from Maddie Waldrop. Waldrop has it. Kick out Lawson. Three ball on the way. And she buried it. Brittany Lawson, the kid. Right, driven through a double team. And what a tough shot from Maddie Waldrop. Sets it up and there's Alexis Burpo to finish. The hoop and the harm. And into the corner mains. Three ball is airborne and good. Now here's Waldrop on the baseline. Crossing out early. Open Kennedy's fan shot three is on the way and good. Burpo. Burpo's down to the baseline. Beat the buzzer. Off glass. Good. Turley moving quickly down the right side. Here's Mays driving to the basket. Off glass. Good. Here come the Lady Tigers. A 5 nothing run. They're back. Turley, now she's going to drive on Blackwood all the way to the rim. Finish it, Maddie, finish it. Yes, sir, Maddie Waldrop with the left hand. And the left hand.
emulate the experience of a state tournament until you've been in that atmosphere. Uh, you can talk about it. You can tell them what you think it's going to feel like, but until they actually feel it for themselves, uh, it's really difficult to describe. And to be able to go there and to get to the Final Four was in itself just a, a miraculous season for us last year. 35-2, and two, all A state champions, Final Four of the Sweet 16. Couldn't have asked for more. Uh, but it makes them hungry to get back and to try to improve on that. And I think that that's one thing that has fueled them this year and in the off season was to try to get better to maybe take that next step. And I think last year, was it the first game that we got down, what, 13-2 and two or something like that? And Brittany Lawson came in and hit, what, two or three threes. big threes, got us back in the game. And then uh, we had a huge comeback against, against Butler. We could never get over the hump, but we, we, we came back on them. Eventual state <laughs> champions, I think they had us down uh, 18 at one time. Yeah. And, of course, we came back and made a run, and uh, we never could take the lead. And we felt like if we could take the lead in that game that we could go ahead and finish it out. But uh, what an awesome experience for the kids uh, to have that comeback, to play against the state's best, and to know that they took the champion of the Sweet 16 to the wire. And it's sort of bad to compare games, but we played them the closest game in the, in the Final Four. We, uh, they, they beat, was it Franklin County they played in the finals? Jordan. They beat them really bad, where they only beat us by 10. But uh, again, it's, a, it's a quite an experience. Uh, for example, and I'll say for the boys last year, it was the last time they had been to the state tournament was 1985 until last year. Uh, I don't think people realize how difficult it is to get there. Um, and when you're a small school, it's even more difficult when you're going up against the five and six A schools that we now have in our region. Uh, so it's special. Uh, you know, we, we don't take championships for granted around here. We, we won all A regional championships, all A state championships. District championships are big for our school. Regional championships are, are huge for our school. And there's times at a small school where you'll have gaps, like from 1985 to 19, uh, uh, or 2016. You'll have that kind of gap. But if you can ever get back, it just makes it that more special. And that's something that... Uh, that our kids really have on their minds is to try to repeat. Uh, that's one thing that we have not done uh, in, in school history is to repeat as regional champions. So um, we, we're really working towards that goal this year. And last night we sort of made history for our school that we won our third straight district championship for the, for the district tournament. It's just very difficult to, to, to win uh, and especially in our district and in our region, but uh, it's also difficult to repeat. And uh, to be able to go out and to have won three district championships in a row and to know that we put ourselves in a position to try to win another regional championship is very special. Play the number one team in the country. So how, how was it for the girls not only sending them into overtime but having a lead there for a while? Like what did it mean to them? I mean, Well, first of all, we're extremely blessed that we have a team that we could feel like can play in that type of atmosphere and in that type of game and I'm so fortunate to have the talent that we have and the young ladies that we have on our team. But just got an opportunity to play them. Uh, I think when I first talked to their coach, they were maybe 11th in the nation. And as it got closer, uh, they continued to move up. And by the time we played them, they were the number one team in the nation. They had the top player in the nation, Anastasia Hayes. She's going to University of Tennessee. Uh, but they have a lot of other good players as well. So for us, to, the atmosphere that night was, was amazing uh, for a high school girls basketball game. Uh, we were fortunate to get to host, uh, so a lot of people in the region got to come. But uh, just to take them to the wire and to let our kids see themselves against the best team, to see what we're capable of doing, I think that game gave our kids a lot of confidence to understand that they could play with anybody. Um, but, you know, very seldom, Coach Carr, do you get those opportunities to play teams like that, especially at Murray. First time ever since I've been here. <laughs> but the other thing, too, about our girls is our girls are selfless when they play. They don't care who gets the credit. They don't care who gets the points as long as we play well and win. And they are, that's the one thing that's really, really great about, the, about, about our kids. Very fortunate that Coach Carr was the athletic director at the time. And uh, he and a, a small panel uh, allowed me to be the coach at age 23, which I can imagine was kind of scary for them. It was definitely scary for me to only be a couple years older than some of my players. I wanted to... Um, 
uh, to make them feel like they made the right decision. Uh, so, you know, just kind of took it head on. Uh, uh, we have a tough district and a tough region, and I knew every year it was going to be difficult, uh, that it was going to be tough. Uh, but I felt like that we had the kids coming through the system that, that we could uh, build something. And uh, it's all about relationships in our program. And one of the best things that ever happened to me was when Monica Evans came on board uh, to help with us. Uh, we have done this for uh, 19 years together. This is my 21st year. And, uh, you know, you're, to, to have a good basketball team, you have to start with your coaching staff. And you both have to be on the same page. And you both have to be about the kids and what's best for the kids and doing things the right way. So I'm very fortunate to have had her for as long as I have. Um, we knew that they were the number one team in the nation and uh, that we just needed to have good confidence going into the game and no matter what happened, that we, if we played our best, we knew we'd give them a good game. Um, once we got ahead, we knew that we could stay with them in the game and that uh, we just had to keep playing together and sharing the ball and playing good defense. That's what really got us started was playing good defense and that's what we had uh, on our minds all year is that if we got stops, we'd win the game and that's what we did. We came deeper and we gained more confidence. Um, obviously, they're really good. They were um, good competition, I think, to play against because you know you don't play people like that every game you get or every chance you get. So to play someone with that kind of level, um, it was good. Different, I guess. I don't know. Um, not everybody expected us to be in the game. So uh, whenever we took them into overtime, it was just kind of. In the moment, we weren't really thinking about it. We knew we could do it, but it was just a matter of playing defense and rebounding. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great summer. We'll see you back in the fall.